Hey guys, later this month, Microsoft's gonna be deprecating some of the legacy settings for multi-factor authentication and self-service password reset. So in this video, I wanna walk through what these changes mean to the organizations that you manage, as well as some of the common FAQs in a quick tutorial. Hey guys, so this will be a quick tutorial. We're gonna go through number one, what this announcement is and what it means. Number two, how to migrate if you haven't already. And then number three, some of the common FAQs I'm hearing from other MSPs around this announcement. So this is the official documentation. I'll link it in the blog post here as part of this video description. But Microsoft announced this all the way back in March of 2023. And like many of their announcements where they're deprecating features or functionality, they pushed this out quite a bit. So now the official date here that's seemingly not going to change is September 30th, 2025. And this is specifically related to how you manage what authentication methods a user can register as part of multi-factor authentication or self-service password reset. So we've had some ways in which we've done this in legacy portals that I'm gonna show you today, and they are moving everything under this new authentication methods policy that's been in market for some time, but many of us may be still using these legacy different policy sections within Entra now to manage that. So I'm gonna walk through that show you how to migrate and go through some of the common FAQs like the end user impact. If we pop into the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, we actually used to manage a lot of this in the Admin Center here for Microsoft Tenant, not Entra, but the Admin Center that you would use for per user MFA settings. They moved this now under the Entra Admin Portal. If I go under per user, I can go under the service settings here. And specifically within the settings, we have this verification options. And this is where we would say, hey, you can use your, you know, a phone call, you could use a text message, you can get a notification through push, you know, to Microsoft Authenticator, and then more of a verification code, which was more of the OTP code that you would get and put into the prompt to fulfill MFA. The other section that you would have in here is if you're setting up self-service password reset, so users can reset their own passwords under the authentication method section here, you'd have the ability to also designate what methods they could use in order to reset their password. Usually you require two methods at least um, within these cases, and maybe in legacy times you also required these security questions. So with these changes, Microsoft's moving this under this authentication methods policy that's going to live here. Up to this point in time, if you had a combination of both, i.e. you were using maybe authentication methods policies or maybe you weren't, Microsoft would respect the authentication methods policy first, and then fall back on looking at the legacy authentication methods policy as part of the multi-factor per user settings, as well as self-service password reset. That would be, you might have a light bulb moment here, that might be if you went in and disabled SMS as an example, which just says no in this particular case, but a user was still able to register that as part of an MFA workflow, that's likely because under the user section here in the per user settings, this was still configured to not respect just the authentication methods policy, but still get this text message to phone, if that makes sense. So with this, they're, they're moving everything over here and they give you this automated guide to start this migration status. And when we go ahead and begin this, you can go into next here and they give you this workflow in this lens here, which basically says, hey, we recommend maybe turning off some of these legacy forms of MFA that are weaker in nature like SMS for SIM swapping and other considerations in lieu of having you know newer forms, stronger forms of multi-factor such as authenticator with number matching um, as an example of this here as well too. So you can go through and actually configure all of these settings to say that it's on or you can target specific users or groups who can use that within here. This kind of brings up one of the FAQ questions of well, what impact is this gonna have to my end users? And the broad answer here is going to be nothing in most cases, as long as you don't change the MFA settings that a user has available. Now, when I say that as a clear example, let's say in the per user MFA settings, you had SMS turned on and that was their only form of authentication. And now when you migrate, you're turning SMS off and you're saying authenticator is going to be on as part of this change. The next time that user signs in, they're going to be prompted to enroll multi-factor with Microsoft Authenticator as an example. So Microsoft's recommendation is to turn all these on 
by default as part of this move to not cause a bunch of disruption or friction within the organization. But uh, I would recommend taking this time to move them to stronger forms if they're not already as their primary or default method. And you can actually see this under the user registration details here where you can see what is their default method as well as any other method registered. So that would be a fallback, you know, if they're in this case, this, one, this guy's using mobile phone as an example within here. And that would be a use case where they would get prompted if I disabled SMS or phone to go ahead and set up something like Microsoft Authenticator. Going back into the policy section here though, if I go ahead and just click on change here, you can say migration in process, which is still gonna be using, you know, the policy for authentication in SSPR, but as a fallback, still respect legacy policies. And then the migration complete is saying we're just using, you know, the authentication methods policy and we're gonna ignore these legacy methods. So you can go through and configure that in one of two ways right here. I can just go in and click on save as an example. Once I do that and go back in to users per user and then these service settings, you'll notice here that this option went away for me and it says these methods are now being managed in the authentication methods policy and under the users and password reset authentication methods. These are also grayed out for me as well too, and says they're being managed in the authentication methods policy. So again here, the end user impact is limited to the users who maybe had legacy forms of MFA that you've now shut off. Otherwise, all the users won't see any changes. They're not gonna be asked to re-authenticate or re-enter or re-enroll an MFA method as part of this change, just to be clear on that. Some of the other common questions I get here, if we take a look at this is, are the per user MFA settings going away? There's kind of a misconception that part of this change is actually removing this in lieu of just leveraging security defaults and conditional access policies for MFA. That is not true. At this time, these settings are still gonna be configurable within the portal. And notice I can still enable MFA. And if I do that, I can then enforce MFA or disable MFA. As an example within here, like this user, Bruce Banner, I can go up and you know click on disable MFA and I've migrated you know to the authentication methods policy as part of this. The other questions I get are around, you know, am I still gonna be able to leverage app passwords and these trusted IPs within here? You will, as you can see, they're not grayed out. You'll still be able to use this for your multifunctional devices like a scanner, as an example. Things like trusted IP though, Microsoft does recommend moving you know, that to a conditional access policy in lieu of trying to use these legacy settings. And then the final FAQ question here is around password reset and basically saying what happens to these security questions if they're being used today. Right now, Microsoft isn't migrating those into the authentication methods policy, but they're also not getting rid of them. So you would still be managing those you know, within this section here the documentation does cite that they're going to move that into the authentication method section eventually, but there's no time frame around that. I'd also just recommend that you deprecate these security questions. They're weaker forms of multi-factor because they can be, you know, uh, they're weaker forms of multi-factor because they can be subject to things like social engineering, but in a lot of cases, they could also be easily guessable uh, from the standpoint of getting back into the account. So preferred method is to move to these stronger forms to get into there like using Authenticator, you know, to reset your password. Hey guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any questions you had about these upcoming changes and be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more announcements like this in the future. I'll see you guys next week.